we can compute the derivative of a composition of two functions using the chain rule. You may have learned this rule in high school. Proving why this rule holds is not so straightforward though. We will do so in this video. Furthermore, we will see some notation and examples of the chain rule. So what is the chain rule? If you have some f which depends via u on x, then the ddx of f of u of x equals df du times du dx. So how does this work? If you have, for example, as function the square root of x squared plus 1, then your u equals x squared plus 1, and your function is basically f of u equals the square root of u. So if you compute its derivative, you get df du over here times du dx over here, and then you can uh, rewrite and simplify a bit to get this expression. So that is how you use it. But why does it hold? For that we need to be a bit careful. For, in order to do so, we look at the derivative at a single point, at x equals x0, and if x equals x0, then u equals u at x0 is called u0. Now, we compute the derivative at this particular point, x equals x0, u equals u0. Now, around this point, we know that f of u uh, is equal to f at u0 plus df to u at u0 times u times u minus u0 plus some remainder, uh, uh, epsilon 1 of u times u minus u0, which goes to 0 if you uh, send u to u0. So if you send u to u0, your epsilon 1 of u goes to 0. So this term goes fast to 0 if you send u to u0, then this term. So here you basically use the Taylor approximation of f of u. You can do the same for u of x. You use the Taylor approximation of u of x around x0 now. So then u of x equals u at x0 plus the du dx at x0 times x minus x0 plus some remainder, uh, epsilon 2 of x times x minus x0. Well, what's important that this remainder goes to 0 uh, if x approaches x0. So if x goes to x0, epsilon 2 of x equals 0 in this limit. So this means also here that this part goes fast to 0 if x approaches x0 than this part. It basically means that around uh, the point x0 you can approximate your function by its uh, tangent line. So that's the idea of the being differentiable there. Now, if you have, now we have done the hard work and it's just a matter of plugging things in. So what do we need? f of u minus f of u0 divided by x minus x0. Because if we send x to x0 in this expression, we get the uh, df dx at x0. So we evaluate what this means. Well, f minus uh, uh, f of u minus f of u0 can bring the f of u0 to the other side. And you're left with these two terms, which then go over here. Uh, and you see they have a u minus u0 in common, which you can factor out here. And you just copy the x minus x0. So there we go. Then <coughs> we also have an expression for u of x minus u0, which is u at x0. I bring this to the other side. Then you are left with these two terms over here, which we copy over here. So there we go. Uh, and you see they have an x minus x0 in common. There's an x minus x0 over there. So these terms cancel out. So we are left with the df du plus epsilon 1 times the du dx plus epsilon 2. Now we send x to x0, which means that we are also sending u to u0. And that implies that these two terms in the limit become 0. So what is left is only the df du at u0 times the du dx at x0. So there you go. The, uh, df dx equals df du times u dx at this specific point. And now, of course, you can do this for any point. So this holds in general for any x u of x combination. So that means that we have our chain rule, the ddx of f of u of x equals df du in general point times du dx. So how does this work? Well, we can use the chain rule to compute the derivative of x to the power 1 over n. So how do we do this? Uh, we, we compute the derivative of f of x to the power n. 
Well, if we have f of x to the power n, we have x to the power 1 over n to the power n is just x. So if we compute its derivative, we get 1. Now we can also use a chain rule to compute this derivative. That means we have the ddx of u to the power n, where u of x equals f of x. Using the chain rule to compute this derivative, we get uh, the derivative of u of n with respect to u, n times u to the power n minus 1 times the u dx equals still this 1. So this means that's that the u dx equals the f dx equals 1 divided by uh, n u to the power n minus 1. Uh, simplify a bit, 1 over u to the power n minus 1 equals u to the power 1 minus n. So we are over there. Uh, the u to the power uh, 1 minus n equals x to the power 1 minus n over n, because u equals x to the power 1 over n. And if you simplify a bit, you get 1 over n times x to the power 1 over n minus 1. So you see that this general rule, which holds for integers, like if you have x, uh, x cubed, you get 3 times x squared, this general rule holds also for uh, fractional powers. And we use a chain rule here to prove it.